Hey guys, I am Shaft of the Clinic Casting Crew. It's been a while since we've done a crash course, so welcome back to class. I hope you've been enjoying all of the other awesome content on the channel, but for those in need of their LOTV strategy fix, this is the place. I want to show you guys some Zerg vs Protoss games from the second Gauntlet LOTV Open, at a time when most other Zerg are playing super safe, scared to death of the might of Protoss Air and Adepts. Solar smashes his way through a plethora of prestigious Protoss, barely breaking a sweat. How is he able to do this? He is known for his insane micro, but that underwrites his accomplishment. It's all about his opener. The mid game varies, but Solar's goal is to get to the mid game with some form of economic advantage before exploding his tech and then hard countering his opponent. What makes this most valuable is that it is the most basic of benchmarks. Each minute mark has its own significance. By understanding and responding to these rapid phases, you can secure clear advantages over your opponent when he is weakest. Most openers can be measured on investment and then the return on that investment. Typically players can invest in one of three categories. Almost any investment one might suggest should fall into one of these three. Economy, technology, and army. Given a total of three points, you must allocate accordingly. Do you invest all of your resources into economy so you can then multiply your investment? Do you invest all of those resources into an army in the hope of ending the game now? Or are you the type of player who would like to invest in research and then win in the ultra late game? Each of those playstyles is based on an idea that is inherent to the opening. A six pull focuses primarily on an army of slow links, no tech. This emphasizes army over either of the two categories. A ling bane all in would show a heavy investment in army with a minor investment in tech. A one base muta play might rate high in technology, but can never have much army or economy to defend or utilize it. This particular style focuses the most heavily on attack. In Brood War, this was known as Sauron Zerg and was one of my personal favorites to watch. It emphasized gaining a huge economy early on, while neglecting tech and army as much as possible to not die before exploding with constant rally lines of massed, low-tier units. If economy is our highest priority, then research is our lowest priority. Before we get into that match, though, I would like to show you the opening minutes of what we consider standard in today's meta. With a standard build emphasizing an earlier pull and relatively earlier gas, though still not the earliest gas possible, slow lings arrive at a very similar time to the three hatch examples we will look at later. Also, the adept still manages to penetrate the zerg base and kills a few drones. The earlier pull is not providing earlier scouting information, nor is it providing a more sturdy defense against adepts. Any investment towards this receives very little return, whereas the three hatch before pool I will show you now hits similar benchmarks but invests more intelligently in economy to snowball into the mid game. So here we see Solar going ahead and taking his third base again before his pull. Notice now that the debt of the adept is only about halfway done. Really, there's no reason to be producing anything but drones right now. This is what makes this strategy so awesome. Now we're getting a small number of lings, mostly for scouting purposes, and we are building up to a major moment at three minutes. Three minutes is the most important part of this build. This is when you see really the first earliest possible adept in almost every situation. There are some that can arrive earlier in the form of proxied adepts and such, but with your everyday average standard play, this is the timing. Three minutes is the first key timing to remember. Until now, the drone counts between the standard build order and Solar's three hatch have been fairly similar. 
Take a look at this infographic for full worker counts per race listed by game. As you see, it is now between 3 minutes and 4 that the drone count really explodes for Solar. How can he do that? Is it a gamble? A hope his opponent won't attack? It's based on critical scouting information he obtains at 3 minutes. In most scenarios, he will be safe, but if he should cheese, he can transition to a much more defensive posture. However, in most circumstances, it will be confirmation to drone harder, which most Zergs simply are not doing because of their early investment in gas. According to the Triforce model, any investment in gas is an investment in the technology category. In Bly's game, you see him clearly making an early gas, Roach Warren, Ling Speed, and even an Evo Chamber for fast upgrades. Shortly after this, he produces a small army of Lings, which means the one thing he cannot be investing in heavily is his economy. This shows clearly when you begin to take a look at the drone count around 5 minutes. So with the Adept just arriving, it has scouted that they're third base, but immediately kind of backs off the creep and wants to reposition itself. You can see it trying to sneak up here, but a couple of Ling's going to cut it off. We'll see, does it just go home, or is it going to try to activate? And it immediately goes home. It sees that there's already slow Ling's on the field, and there's a third base up. There's not really much damage that the Adept can actually do in this situation. So by simply having the third base and producing a small number of lings because it, they spawning pool basically comes out at the same time, uh, I believe it's like a 15, 20 second difference, but it's totally negligible as you'll still have lings by three minutes, meaning you don't have to worry about fighting the adept when it actually comes time to take your third. Now, moving into the four to five minute mark, we see that Solar is clearly perfectly happy trying to just drone up. He does go ahead and get Ling Speed as soon as possible. He gets the Roach Warn. He's going to get all the necessary tech now that he's got a healthy drone count on three bases. He can make the same army that Bly was making earlier, only he's got a better economy behind it. We see the two gases coming up, so we already had these two gases, he just built these two, and now he's taking one over here. He did take this one, but it was cancelled by the Adepts, and here is an important part of the game as well. Five minutes or just before that, as you see here, your warp prisms can arrive now this happens to be a close by air position so it's going to arrive even sooner but typically it's at the five minute mark and that's a very important timing but if you know your opponent's close by air expect it a little bit sooner now on the field there was probably 11 or so there was actually probably definitely more than 11 but he only had a small handful of lings he is forced to defend this with drones a little bit so he's definitely going to take some losses you see that he's already lost one worker and it doesn't look like a great situation for solar but again his opponent is already 10 he was 11 workers behind because solar was able to get such an awesome economy in the early game scenario this is going to work for him because what are the chances these adepts can kill 11 drones and that's just to break even so nine drones were killed and yet solar still has a very healthy drone count taking the lead now getting an even larger lead in the drone count and this is really what it's all going to come down to and you see he's going ahead and queuing up some roach upgrades now that he's got the lair tech. His goal at this point in the game is just to stay safe. Because after the 5 minute warp prism harassment, 
any drones that are replenished during this time are a mistake. Now, Solar has managed to produce some drones, but he's continuing to make an army, and that's very, very smart of him. The reason for that is six minutes tends to be when the first real pushes arrive. Now, this game is a little bit delayed. It's going to arrive between six and seven minutes, maybe a little bit later. Um, but six to seven minutes is really when you're starting to look for proxy pylons and warp prism pushes. And we've already seen the warp prism, so it's very, very smart of Solar to go ahead and begin producing some of these Ravagers, some Roaches, some higher uh, level scouting. The Overseer will also come very, very, very useful uh, if there's any Dark Templar on the map. But let's take a look at what vision he currently does have. He knows that there's this huge amount of gateways over here, so he knows that the gateway push that he should be expecting between six and seven minutes is right at his doorstep because once these complete the perfect protoss push will immediately start the moment these complete the pylon will have already completed the proxy pylon that is and then the protoss push will start if the zerg is playing at an advantage the protoss may wait around uh, of production before going on the attack but solar can't be a hundred percent certain of how much ahead of his opponent he is because he's not that far ahead it's very very close and the adepts are now back in the main and this is going to give the protoss player neeb the ability to push into this third base with a very small army but most of the zerg army is up here occupied and is actually melting to these lings look at this 46 lings have melted to these adepts uh roaches aren't going to have that big of an issue but roaches just aren't quite uh in the right position to deal with this and i don't even think there's any on the map just yet no there's 12 they're just not in the right position there they are and now we see they are coming down here to defend this third and they're actually going to push it off quite well so solar with some really good micro but also some predictive foreknowledge of exactly what his opponent might be up to has managed to successfully repel the first waves of this protoss attack yet you see this protoss attack is very very strong neeb is not a player to be trifled with and solar is being put to his test but he is clearly able to get a concave even bringing a couple of drones off the line but knowing that if he can defend this push his opponent is going to have a very hard time taking a third and that's where this is going to go from here it will now be solar's job to break apart the protoss the protoss biggest weakness is that their units need to stay together so if you hit them on multiple fronts they crumble the moment a third base is established you can sweep in there with mutalisks from one angle and your roachling sometimes ravager army from another now we see the third is going to be taken and very very strong attacks here by the ravagers and just a few links here to tank some damage some more in production and we do see a lot of harassment still coming out of this warp prism adepts are good for harassment they're not so good later on in the game uh, and by investing in them we see that neeb is kind of opening an attack here for solar uh, any resources spent in harassment and lost that easily can't be used to defend and that's kind of a key thing solar is now using his ground army to come in here and snipe this nexus question is can he get it because right now he's trading very well and there's the cancel boom he has a spire halfway done but he's not neglecting his ranged upgrades he's only upgrading one at a time that's really all you can afford in legacy of the void uh getting double upgrades is really too greedy right now it may become useful later who knows but especially when coming out of a spire play this is going to be a huge moment 
adepts still trying to work their magic unbeknownst to them that warp prism will be shut down the moment these mutalisks pop and again the ravager army wants to move out any trades are going to go in the zerg favor it doesn't matter how cost effective he is as again the protoss army needs to have a significant mass to be effective and the more significant that mass the better that's why protoss death balls have always been the bane of every starcraft player's existence and you can see that uh the ravagers actually accidentally uh getting hit by that disruptor not looking very good for solar but here's the thing even though all these disruptor attacks are doing great against the zerg ground army take a look at what the mutalisks are doing over here So in conclusion guys, I hope you learned today that openers always have a specialization. Any s opener that doesn't try to specialize is going to fail. However, any opener that does specialize will work some percentage of the time just because of coin flips. Those are your six pulls, things like that. However, the best players are looking at every build not as, oh, that's a 7 gate, or that's a this, or that's a that, but rather on where players are investing their resources. So even if someone comes up against a strategy they've never encountered before, just with proper scouting information and using the Triforce model, players can easily tell what their opponents are going to do and what their reactions should be. As you saw in this game, Solar was able to defend with exactly what he needed in order to defend. Those Ravagers are great against Adepts, but also make pushing a third very easy, very simple. It's all about zone control. In addition to that, in the other games we watched, we saw how the mid-game composition, the real defensive composition, from Solar varies. He responds based on what he's scouting. That's it. Now, he knows where he's going. He knows he wants Aspire. However, he knows he can't take that until his opponent attacks him. And if his opponent hasn't attacked him by seven minutes, or rather, if your opponent doesn't attack you in your games, I recommend going ahead and scouting some more. Maybe he's just bad and he's missing his timings, but maybe he's hiding some units or some technology from you that you want to know about. So scout and react. Don't immediately rush to the Mutalisks, as that can lose games. Play this defensive economic style and then transition to the Mutalisks. Because as a Zerg player, those tech switches are everything. Guys, if you learned anything in this episode, if you liked it, please share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe to this channel. It really does support me. If you want to help esports, spread this message around. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And this is Shaft of the Clan Inc. Casting Crew signing out. Good night. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I really like making these videos for you, so please make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out.